G'day and welcome to Cherry Tree Gaming. I'm William J and welcome to a little bit of the behind of the scenes of um, how I record and all that jazz. So I'm going to run you through my whole process of recording and a little bit of the editing side um, and all that kind of stuff through OBS. I, I use this thing called the Markiplier method. Um, I probably titled this episode or tutorial that. Um, and the reason behind this is because I was watching a Markiplier April Fool's video in 2017 this year for me. And yeah, so when I was watching his video, uh, it was like a 360 view thing, man, of him just playing Minecraft. And it was a nice April Fool's video. But I looked at his like second monitor of what he was recording and I noticed that he had his face cam and Minecraft side by side in OBS. I'm just like, how the hell did he do that? So then I reverse engineered that. And from then on, I've been using that kind of method of having my face cam and the game side by side in the one canvas in OBS. And that makes things so much easier. Everything syncs up really nicely and all that jazz. I'm going to just run you through how to set that up. And then I'm going to run you through how to edit a little bit of that because it requires a little bit of like, like basic math and all that kind of stuff. So download, first of all, I'm going to download OBS. I'm just assuming that you've already done that. You've installed it and all that jazz. I have links to everything down below in the description of where to get OBS and all that kind of stuff. So bear me with me while I, while I just skip a few things like that. So you've got OBS installed and all that, man. You've opened it up for the first time and you see this. You've got nothing there. So the first thing that you want to do is you go you need to go to File, Settings. And then you get the Settings page. Now, the important thing here is um, all in the video, this is where you set up everything. So your base canvas is the base resolution that you're recording at. So like, this is the base canvas, 1920 by 1080. Output scaled resolution is what it's going to output to. So if I, if I click clip and record right now, it'll be a 720p video. Even though it's recording 1920 by 1080, the 1080p video, it's going to scale it down. So two, two uh, 1080p windows side by side, all you need to change is the 1920. Because the 1080p is the uh, like the the vertical lines, uh, the 1920 is the horizontal. So we're just extending the horizontal. So we're just doubling that. So that is 3840. Um, so that's what you just type in 3840, and it will then it will change the output scaled resolution again. But you want to match that to again 3840 by 1080. Because like, there's no point in scaling it down when you're doing local recordings. Um, and the downscale filter, I just changes the lens size. But we don't really need to, uh, I probably butchered that name. Don't really need to change it because you're not actually not scaling anything down. A common FPS value here, you can actually change it to, I'll just do it with the common FPS values there. And we, I just like to set it to 60. Most of the games are recorded at 30, but I'll just do it at 60 anyway. It just makes things a lot smoother. I have got a beefy machine. Um, and then I'll just click apply. And now you see that. The things have become super wide. Um, but that, yeah, that, that's fine for now. Uh, audio will go in here. I like, uh, I like the sample rate of uh, 44.1. I like to keep this all flipping pretty stock standard. Um, but this is where we can choose to do desktop audio devices and all that kind of stuff. Everything's disabled right now. Um, but I'll show you what I do instead of using these to make things a little bit more, more like. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's some terrible at tutorials. Now, when we come to output, um, this is where this is where the, some of mo the most important settings are. This is your rendering settings. Um, there is an amazing guide uh, on the OBS forum. I have a link to the description down there. I might even pop up a picture. Um, it's high quality local recordings and multi multiple audio streams. So this is where I found my optimal settings for, for doing this. So we're going to go to advanced here. Now we're going to ignore the streaming side of this right now because we're not streaming. Uh, we're doing local recordings. So we go to recordings here. I like to record in the format of MP4. You could do MKV. MKV is better uh, because if, you, if OBS crashes, it will save up to the, like the last second. MP4, if it crashes, you've lost all your data. But the problem with M uh, MKV is it's, you have to re-render it out to edit it. 
in programs like Adobe Premiere, that, that's the program I use. So I just use MP4 and I run the risk of losing my data. Mind you, it has never happened with OBS like, um, at all. But then again, I run multiple hard drives and all that kind of crazy stuff. So we're going to choose MP4. Um, the multiple audio tracks is another thing that you want to use. It makes everything a lot smoother. So audio track, I usually, I'll use three, but you can go all the way up to six. I'll run through that in a moment. Encoder. We don't want to use a stream encoder. I have, I have a beefy graphics card. I highly recommend using the graphics card encoder over your CPU, especially if you're playing PC games and all that kind of stuff. We're going to use, and I use an NVIDIA graphics card, but there's also an AMD version of this. Uh, as I said, the link to high quality recordings and all that is in, in the description below. Highly recommend reading that because um, it will help you out immensely. So I use an NVIDIA encoder and I use not rate control CBR. I use CQP. Do not know what that stands for, but it does a nice high quality recording. The issue though is it, man, chews up a lot of hard drive space. We're talking, if I record like a two hour session, it can be sometimes upwards of 60 gig. Uh, so <laughs> be wary of that. Uh, I use 18. It's a little bit overkill, but I use that as a bit of an overkill. The lower you go, the higher the quality is. So if I clicked zero, it would be lossless and the file sizes would be huge. Um, 18 is around about the, the place where it becomes almost lossless quality. Um, but yeah, I do around about 18 because I'm doing two 1080p windows side by side. So I want the quality a bit higher. Um, which means the space goes a lot higher. Um, but yeah, so I'll click apply on that as well. So now we've got three audio tracks. We've got all our settings here. That's the, that's the starting. Now, now we need to start adding sources and all that kind of stuff. This is where I add my mic and desktop audio and all that bloody jazz to everything. So I'm going to add an input capture. That'd be my mic. Input captures are for mics and, uh, like, yeah, pretty much mics is essentially in the inputs, man, into the thing. Output is like your speakers and all that. So I'm just going to put mic in here. So here we go. So, so actually, I can just uh, call it my road mic because I like to do I like to do things a little bit like pedantic. So this is going to be my road mic, and I'm going to put microphone. Here we go. There's my road. Now you can see that I'm talking. Hell yeah. Um, put that there. And then the other thing that we're going to put through is another input capture. I'm going to call this the C920 mic. Uh, this is just my, going to be my cam mic. I barely ever use it. Um, but say for some reason, halfway through a recording session, I accidentally knocked the USB out of, the, out of my mic. I lost my mic. But I don't. I lost my main mic, but I haven't lost the C920 mic. So I do that as a backup. So I'm going to just grab that and we're going to find the C920 down here somewhere. Yep, here we go, microphone HD Pro webcam. I am just a blind. Um, so that, that's, that's the both done. You can see that I'm speaking. See how like my uh, C920 mic is a little bit lower than the other one? It's further away. It's all the way over there. Uh, <laughs> the next next ones that we're going to add in is uh, output device. This is going to be our um, desktop audio. I just like to call it desktop audio. So let's do that. I do it this way instead of using the inbuilt audio stuff because it means I can, um, it means like things are just easier. Like I can add as many as I want, essentially. It keeps things a lot more separate and I can mute them. And I, I, I just prefer this method. Uh, I use the, I use voice meter banana. So where the hell is that? Speakers voice VB. So I'm going to have to use that one. Use device stamps. Here we go. Now, say if I pretended to, you know, play some music over here from like, say, pretzel, or no, that wouldn't work. So say if I like just like pumped up like my audio there from the speakers, it will pop through. So yeah, like now you can see all the, all the audio devices are working there. All right. So the next step, uh, I also click this little lock so I don't accidentally click them. Lock, locking something means you can't move it anymore. They added that feature in uh, very recently and I've, I bloody love it. Uh, but yeah, the next one is now actually adding our two sources. Now, because I'm currently using my, my uh, camera 
It might actually display, but I'm going to show you how to add that anyway. And then I'm just going to add an image in that area. So what we're going to do is um, go to not game catcher. It's a video capture device. Usually this is how it comes up. Video capture device. Uh, I'm going to just call this uh, the C920. Right now it's got my Razer Ripsaw uh, card there. We're not using that. So we're going to go to Logitech HD Pro Webcam. Any other devices there will pop up as well. The settings I kind of use for this man um, would be, I go custom for resolution and FPS. Resolution is definitely 1920 by 1080. Uh, match output FPS? No, we want actually 30. Video format, I put in the MPJEG. 601 gives you a more vibrant color instead of the other one. And you want, oh no, you want 709 but you'll want partial for the UV color range. The, the less color range you have, the less grainy it will look. Um, I can show you that with like my Ripsaw in a moment. That's my capture card. Uh, buffering and all that, that's all fine. Don't want to actually capture the audio at all. So like, that's fine. We'll just put that there like that. So here we go. And now, yep. See, you will get some of these like flipping devices down here that won't do anything. Uh, but I wish I could get remove them from the mixer, but you just can't. But the next one you want to do is your actual video capture device. So say if you've got like your own capture card, this is where you would add that. You can also add like um, PC. I'll show you how to add PC as well. So this is the next part here. So we're going to go video capture device. I'll just call this my Ripsaw because that's, that's the brand of uh, capture device I use. There we go. We're in here, Ripsaw capture card. And then this is where I'll change a few settings. Resolution, uh, 9 to 20 by 1080. Uh, uh, this is where I usually just uh, pump it to 60. I know I know it's overkill, like most games don't even run at this. Uh, I do 709, color rate partial, buffering. Now, with the Ripsaw itself, to capture the audio, we actually need to go to Wave Out. Um, it's just a weird bug that they have with the uh, capture card. I think the Avira Media... Extreme is exactly the same because it's a, practically a clone. There we go. So now we've got we've got this working. Hopefully I've edited that well because <laughs> that took me a while to get there. Um, so this is my ripsaw now. This is just uh, capturing the good old Nintendo Switch. Uh, so this has gone to the left as well. So we're just going to drag that across and snap that to that side. So there we go. We've got, we've got our two side-by-side -side windows. There we go. And now, now we can just like play the game. Uh, hit continue. We got the music going on, all that jazz. Cool. So we got that going on now. There. Hopefully, I did that well, man. If we could actually actually see my camera, that would be actually pretty cool. Um, so th there we go. So if I lock that in place, I can't move that anymore. So that that's the basic setup of that. Um, there. But we don't click record yet. So now we've got everything set up. There. This is where the cool thing about multiple audio streams comes into play. So if we go to uh, advanced audio properties, yep. So I just click the cog on it. You can click the cog on any of those there and just go uh, advanced audio properties. And as you can see here, we've got, we've got the Ripsaw, the C920 desktop audio mic, C920 mic, road mic, and they're on all audio tracks. And this is what we don't want. So what we want to do is uncheck everything. So especially these two top ones, the Ripsaw, we want to uncheck. Uh, do, do, do. And then we've got the desktop audio here. So we want that on track one. So we're going to uncheck all the rest of the tracks. And then we want the C920 mic on probably track three. Um, because this is the order I like things in. And then we want the road mic on track two. Do, do, do. So I've got one, two, three. There we go. So desktop audio will be on track one. My microphone will be on track two. And then the C920 um, camera mic will be on track three. So that, that's all those done. Um, and then you just click close. There we go. Uh, that means when I record, I'm dump that into Adobe Premiere. I will have three audio tracks. They're all separate. I can... In I edit their levels independently post 
recording. That's what you want because it gives you more control over your uh, data. Anyway, I digress on that. Now that's done. There's one more thing I forgot to show you um, in the settings. We go to settings, go output recording. Your recording path is where your video save. If you've got like a solid state drive and it's large, record there. But only if it's large. I use a mechanical hard drive. I've got a three, no, four terabyte for my recordings, I think. Um, because this chews up so much data. <laughs> so much data. I actually turn through hard drives pretty quickly. Um, I do a thing called, I, I, I have uh, an archive hard drive. So I back up everything to another hard drive. And then once that gets full of archives, I buy a new hard drive, remove all the archive stuff of my recording hard drive, vice versa. Um, that's, that is everything done for there. Um, I'm pretty, pretty sure, 100% sure. Um, oh, in audio, that's another thing as well. In output, you want to put your audio bit rate probably at 320. It's a bit overkill, uh, but it just means you're more high quality for everything. Um, because I'm going to use three tracks, I put them all at 320. Let's click apply on that as well. There you go. Bob's your uncle. If I started clicking, re starting recording right now, I'd be recording everything. Um, and then you'd have this awesome file. And there we go. That's the, that's step one. <laughs> that's step one, everybody. Um, yeah, that, that's how you set up the OBS for this, uh, mark apply method, as I call it. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for that. Uh, I've just learned this over time. This is not the best way or the right way of doing it. This is the way I do it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for part one of this tutorial. So if you've liked this episode, give me a good old like. Comment if you want to say good day and subscribe if you want to see more of my content. Now, as always, thank you, lads and lasses. Oh, so I've got a preset here that I've made called Cherry Pod Noise Reduction. Uh, sorry about that noise there. I'm going to open this up and actually show you how I run through this. I've got a thing called Adaptive Noise Reduction. That's actually in uh, Noise Reduction Restoration. Adaptive Noise Reduction. I'm going to open this one up. 